Thank you, Itzik, for the kind introduction and good morning to all. Um, we are heading towards the end of Cyber Week and uh, as in a plan with no master plan, um, there are a lot of news about cyber warfare starting uh, just um, something like a week ago in the New York Times about uh, Americans uh, going into the Russian grid uh, and just two, before two days, the day before yesterday, uh, some talks about uh, the U.S. against Iran with cyber and today in the news in the morning I heard about the Russian cyber activity in the Mediterranean against the GPS, uh, which uh, has some failures in Ben Gurion Airport, but also in Cyprus. So like uh, a master plan with no master, everyone talks about cyber during Cyber Week. And one may ask himself, what does it take to be a cyber power? Or, as I would like to put it, and uh, what does it take to be part of the World Cyber Club. And just in short, because it's a whole lecture that I gave just a year ago about cyber clubs, uh, there are several ingredients, I call it, in order to be part of it, in order to be a real cyber power. And you need at least three of them. And this is cyber power, meaning the ability to use cyberspace uh, as a power against uh, hostile activity. This is cybersecurity, the capacity to defend yourself, to defend the nation state. But it's not just the cyber power to attack or to use cyberspace, and not just cybersecurity of how to defend, but also the capacity to make R&D, to have a vivid industry, and cyber infrastructure. And with infrastructure, I mean telecommunication, physical networks, or the application level, companies such as uh, the American Cisco, Google, and others, you may imagine. And if you look at it, there are very few nation states on earth which may belong to the cyber club. The three superpowers are, of course, the United States, China, and Russia, and they are the leading powers. But there are some but very few other countries we joined this um, race to be part of this club. And Israel has made its moves uh, starting in the 90s, not a national move, but starting in the 90s with, um, with some industry in the area which then was called information security checkpoint as uh, I think the leader in this area in Israel, and through academics and some governmental activity. But Israel really took the real move from national perspective in 2010 with the cyber initiative, and then in 2011 with the first governmental resolution uh, to establish a national cyber bureau reporting directly to the prime minister in order to lead Israel, to lead the whole Israeli approach towards cyber, and to um, make Israel a cyber power, a global power, not competing, of course, with US, China, or Russia, but one of the global powers, or as I put it, to belong to the cyber club. And then, uh, within several years, Israel has succeeded to generate a comprehensive strategy regarding its approach to the cyber domain, with three governmental resolutions, everything is based on the concept of operation and policy of how to make a nation state a real power in cyber. So the first resolution was in 2011 of how to build Israel capacity, the ecosystem, and to generate a national comprehensive cybersecurity strategy. But then in 2015, February 15, by the way, with the continuation government. Uh, the government uh, took two very important resolutions. One of how to, um, to secure its civilian 
its civilian sectors and how to build robustness in all in um, around Israel in its cyberspace. And the second one, how to defend how to defend cyberspace. One is the robustness of the civilian market, and the second one is how to defend operationally. And if you look at it, these three three resolutions together, which are quite pioneering. And currently, we are not the only one, but one of the leading three nation states that have a comprehensive cyber strategy. Together, these three resolutions contain a comprehensive approach to cyber. One is how to build the robustness of the civilian market. Second, how, how to secure it and how to build its cyber security and cyber power. And the third, which was the first one in Israel, is how to build the capacity in order to be by a cyber power. And by capacity, I mean academic research, industry, human capital, everything which is needed in order to be a cyber power. Together, this is a comprehensive approach. But this, this was the first move, which, by the way, put Israel not just as um, cyber power, but I will tell you something very interesting from the national perspective of Israel. A lot of people talk about our, um, our leadership in innovation, in technological innovation. We have other areas which we believe that we are experts and we were pioneering with, for example, water and other issues in agriculture. But in all these areas, as strong as we were, we were niche players, regional players. Cyber is the first field through which Israel is not just a niche player and not just leading per capita. For example, we have more engineers and scientists per capita than any other nation states on Earth. We are with 130 per 10,000 citizens, followed by South Korea and the United States with 80. 130, 130, and 80. Per capita, we are leading. But per capita, and we have very small capita. But in cyber, we succeeded not just to be leaders per capita, but to be global players in absolute numbers. Because, for example, the investments that reach Israel in cyber are second only to the US. 20% out of the world investments in cyber security reach Israel. Second only to the US. 20%, we are 0.1% of the world population, while 20% of the world investments, private investments, reach Israel. And this is just an example. Other examples are the number of cybersecurity companies, which is second to the US, and other measurements as well. So in cyber, the cyber was our first move to be not just per capita players or niche players, but also trying to be global players. This is the first move of Israel towards the global technological race trying to be a global player in a technological world. But if you look again from global strategic point of view, the cyber military race is just one of two. And what we can see, we are talking a lot about, about Iran and others, but if you ask me, the real race on Earth, which is here for several years and is going to be with us for at least one or two decades, is the race for cyber digital supremacy. And this race is a double race. One, which I've already mentioned, is the military cyber race. Where US, China, and Russia are the leaders, Israel has made its move to be one of these, one of these uh, nation states of the cyber club, Israel, United Kingdom, and there are several others. But the second race is more technological, economical race of how to harness cyberspace with AI algorithms in order to have economical superiority. And why is it part of cyber race? 
because AI is here with us for several decades. Michal has just mentioned that she studied it several, a decade before, a decade ago. I, a little more than a decade ago. But AI is here for several decades. And big data, we had big data. Netflix had big data before cyberspace, a lot of movies. But cyberspace, through its total connectivity to everything, and this is a cyber phenomenon, the total connectivity, connectivity and, co and um, computing capacity enables to reach each and every human on Earth, each and every device, and through this, to gather a lot of data, and we are talking again about AI. For those of you who are young, we talked a lot about AI 20 and 30 years ago, but now it's all about AI data-driven. The ability to reach every corner on Earth, every human, AI data-driven. And now we talk again about new algorithms and how to gather a lot of data and to crime data, to analyze data and everything. And this is because of cyberspace. So looking at it, you understand that the cyberspace enables cyber military activity, cyber power, cyber security, a new threat industry. And the second wing is the technological economical race means how to harness cyberspace in order to be superior in AI data-driven technologies. What is interesting globally is that when you try to understand who the leaders are, you find US and China, of course, but the third one is not Russia, but European Union, which is nation state. So if you look at this double race, from this table you can see that the US and China are those who compete for cyber digital supremacy. Going back to Israel, while through the last decade, and cyber is just one of the examples for it, we made our move with the military, military cyber capacity, we are now heading toward the second move of Israel to also be part of the second race, the, the second wing that I showed to you, the race for techno-economy supremacy through AI algorithms. And in order to be part of this club, one should have an access to data and the right data regime to use data. So there will be, so startups will be able to work with data, to analyze data, to do what they need with data, that big companies will be able to analyze data, to have knowledge out of this data. One also needs an AI industry and some critical technologies and computing power. This is all about being part of the race. If you talk just about data science or very um, narrow AI technologies, you are not part of the race. It's just part of what you need, computing power, critical technology, other critical technologies, industry, everything in order to be part of this race and to um, position yourself as one of the global players. So, these are the three questions and the mandate that we got in order to recommend to our government what should be the national plan so Israel will be also part of this race. And this is very important because Israel is a small country. And being a small country, we do not compete with US or China. We do not try to be like them. We do not have no the um, budgets, no enough human capital in order to compete with them. So we should ask ourselves what to do in order to be part of these global race, and there are two very important questions. One, what is critical, meaning without that we will not be able to be there, and then where do we have a global advantage? Where our strengths, 
Ah, this is important. And all that in between, we are not going to do anything with it. Only to focus our effort about what is critical and, about, and where we have advantages. And then what the national plan should be. And since my time is up, I know it. I will just tell you in two more minutes, that's what I need, what we are doing. We gathered more than uh, 300 people among our industry, academy, government, and uh, security forces. You see, we usually say government and security forces, although they are also part of the government, in order to have several teams Everything in Israel that may have something to do with AI or think that you know something or those who really know something about AI are part of the job and there are a lot of teams together thinking and we have finalized the work with the teams and we are now going through the final stage. We divided our efforts into three trajectories. One is technologies, as I mentioned, not just data science but also computing power and quantum computing is part of it, and Honor Berry that is here is the head of this team. IoT and sensors, autonomous systems, and distributed intelligence. All the technologies that from our point of view are part of smart systems. A second trajectory is to see what should be done inside the leading sectors, financial, healthcare, transportation, and security. And the third trajectory is governmental view. Research centers, human capital, uh, cyber and AI, and other issues as well. All these work in, in integrating group that for the whole year worked with these teams trying to see, to integrate the knowledge that is there out of the team, and currently, during these months, we are trying to really find out what should be the five leading recommendations to the government and what should be the national plan that will take Israel, the same as in cyber, to be global power in smart systems and to be part of the second wing of the double race that I mentioned. In three months, I will be able to tell you what, what our recommendations were, but in due time. Thank you all.